Did you know that 95% of diets fail, apparently? This is an extremely commonly cited statistic. A bit like the old wives tale that masturbation makes you go blind. Lots of people have heard it, but have no fucking idea where it originated from. Do 95% of diets fail? You know what? It doesn't really pass the common sense detector. To definitively claim what percentage of diets fail, you have to definitively know how many people are dieting. But there isn't exactly a worldwide survey targeting adults who have tried to lose weight. Nobody knows exactly what percentage of diets fail. No one. Now, what you can claim are statistics from specific studies. I.e., in this study, a thousand people tried to lose weight, and five years later, 95% of them hadn't lost any weight at all. But you need to understand that other studies might not match. So, to address this claim, where did the original 95% statistic come from? Rather than focusing on what diets can achieve in the short term, which is obviously weight loss, a more pertinent question is how many people are able to maintain that weight in the long term? Because very few people want to lose weight temporarily only to gain it all back, right? In 1959, a research paper was published which kind of took aim at weight loss trials because it showed that many of them actually delivered underwhelming results. So to test how effective a weight loss intervention was, they took 100 consecutive patients who were prescribed to lose weight from various departments in a New York hospital. They were then prescribed diets ranging from 800 to 1500 calories per day, and their charts were reviewed two and a half years later. And I won't lie, these results didn't exactly paint a beautiful picture of optimism. At the time, success was viewed as losing 20 or 40 pounds. Anyone who maintained weight loss of less than 20 pounds was deemed a failure. And imagine that, losing 19 pounds and then being told that you failed because you missed their yardstick by a teeny tiny margin. That would fucking suck. In this trial, only 12 patients lost 20 pounds or more at any one time. Only one of those lost 40 pounds or more. 39 patients did not return to the clinic at any point and 28 didn't return to the hospital at any point. We can all agree that this isn't exactly fantastic. And unfortunately, weight loss maintenance rates at the later follow-up were equally pessimistic. Only six patients were described as being successful at the one-year follow-up, only two patients successful at the two-year follow-up. And when looking at the rest of the literature, these authors concluded that only 5% of dieters were successful in losing 40 pounds or more. Hence, 95% of diets fail. So, this statistic is correct. I mean, for this study, sure. But the thing is, this isn't exactly representative of other literature. Even one of the authors, Dr. Albert Stunkard, was later quoted in the New York Times saying he didn't understand why people kept quoting the statistic. According to him, as one of the researchers, subjects were just given a diet and sent on their way. 100 subjects isn't exactly a lot. Imagine asking 100 people that worked in an office how many of them tried to lose weight and didn't succeed. So out of all of us, how many have lost 40 pounds or more? Just five out of this 100. Okay, let's conclude that 95% of all diets fail. Let's remember that subjects were referred from other departments in the hospital. These weren't people who voluntarily signed up because they wanted to lose weight. They were just given a diet and sent on their way. No ongoing behavioral modification support. Also, by defining success with the lofty goals of losing either 20 pounds or 40 pounds, it does kind of nudge that success statistic towards the lower numbers. So using this study to claim that 95% of all diets fail is a bit disingenuous. So let's compare some alternatives. One paper concluded that 28% of subjects lost 10% or more of their body weight one year into the intervention when using intense lifestyle modification techniques. One study showed clinically meaningful weight loss in 50% of patients after eight years. Another showed that subjects in the National Weight Control Registry lost an average of 13.6 kilograms and maintained it for more than five years concluding that, based on survey data, approximately 20% of people were successful at maintaining weight loss in the long term. Now yes, weight loss maintenance rates are lower than we would like. I absolutely do acknowledge that, and we need to have very serious conversations about long-term weight loss maintenance, not just about short-term weight loss itself. What percentage of people actually maintain significant weight loss? Well, 
There's no way of knowing for sure. But the point is, claiming that 95% of all diets fail is such a cherry-picked example that it is actually a myth.